Hi everyone, Pastor Steve here. This is uh, carrying on with Genesis 6. Yesterday we had the Bible reading. Today we're going to give a bit of explanation of what the Genesis 6 is about. As you know from yesterday's reading, it's about Noah's flood. So um, verse 5 is telling us that, you know, the sad story of the wickedness of man, how great it was in the sight of God and, and that the thoughts and imaginations of the heart were evil continually. So God sent a judgment or was going to send a judgment upon mankind, upon the earth, um, for the wickedness of man. Now, what this tells us is, again, that God, though he may be slow to bring judgment, that he will bring judgment upon that which is evil. And our present age that we live in today is an age that's much like Noah's time. And uh, we can be sure that at some point in history, uh, that God will also bring judgment upon this generation for its own wickedness, as it's promised in the Bible, actually. Um, also, like today, uh, verses 4 and 5, it talks about, I might just scroll down to that a bit so you can actually see it. Uh, bear with me a second. As it, it talks about that the, the earth uh, was... You know, every inclination of the heart was towards evil, but also tells us that um, that the there were mighty men of renown. There were, you know, men of great influence, and they were leading the world into total rebellion against God. And we see that today. We see that many of our elites and people of power, governments, you know, leaders of the world, the United Nations, World Economic Forum, many prime ministers and presidents um, and people that are in places of great authority and power are, are the ones that are sort of leading us into all of this darkness that we presently are going through. And that's like a total rebellion against God, just like in the days of Noah. And they were mighty men then, men of renown and power, and it's the same today, although the people, the ordinary people are following the lead of these people as well. But we find in, in verse 8 that Noah found grace or found favour in the eyes of the Lord. And in every generation that God has his people, and uh, it was so back in that time as well. So he told Noah <clears throat> to make an ark uh, because he was going to send a flood. So what were some of the things that, uh, he, that he approved of with Noah? Well, he was a just man or a perfect man, a righteous man, blameless in his time, and he walked with God. Um, and God is still looking for people like that today. All the world around us, like in Noah's time, might be going after that which is wrong, but we can be like Noah and be a man of God and do the right thing. And God search still searching for people like that today. Um so that's mostly the main parts of the story, apart from the fact that God did eventually send a flood upon the earth uh, after about 120 years, and that all those that were outside the ark died, and it was only Noah and his family that went into the ark, and they took animals into the ark, and eventually they would, uh, as the other chapters following this talk about that, they came out after about a year or so, and uh, the and life began again outside the the ark. That after the flood rescinded, but anyway, that's for another day. But um, many people doubt whether the story is true, or it, many people think it's just a fairy tale and it's just got a religious message, just telling a spiritual truth or something. But so, is there any truth to this story that we've read yesterday? That, uh, that there was a worldwide flood, um, that we can see anything in, in history or in science or archaeology uh, that might prove that Noah's flood actually happened and it's not just a, a kid's bedtime story. All right, so these are some of the reasons I believe it's a true story. Um, there's much evidence that points to it around us, even though you might not hear that in the mainstream media or in mainstream documentaries because most of those are opposed to the Bible and the God of the Bible in particular. But if you look at the fossil record and the geological record, and uh, they all point 
to a great worldwide flood in the past. And uh, the evidence for that, well, there should be evidence of a vast number of living creatures who bear the marks of being suddenly killed, you know, and buried for that matter, such as what happened at the time of the flood. And uh, there would also be thick layers of rock sediment over the earth, which we see. Um, it may be a strange subject to be speaking about concern in the Bible, but uh, the scientific, geological and fossil evidence all point to the truthfulness of the story of Noah and the ark. Uh, all these fossils that we we find, bear most of them that were, were buried during the time of the flood, and they bear record. They were buried very rapidly. Some of them, even whilst they were eating or even giving birth, we find um, animals that were sea creatures on tops of mountains, which points to the fact that the mountains at one point in history had been covered with water, which fits in with the flood. Um, where, where's all the water gone, a lot of people might say. Well, have a look around the world now. There's Much of the world is still water. I mean, obviously, there's land. But there's a great deal of water still left, and I believe that a lot of that's the residue left from the time of Noah's flood. Uh, places like the Grand Canyon show evidence of having been formed rapidly by a great flood, and, and there's violent upheaval that's consistent with the flood story, That though many scientists try to say that the Grand Canyon and, and places like that in Australia, like the Three Sisters and the Blue Mountains and that, these were formed over millions of years, but um, the evidence really does point towards it happened very quickly. This could be part of what happened after the flood. Um, another strong evidence for the flood story is the universal story of a flood found throughout the world's different cultures. They all speak of a flood got coming from God as a judgment for evil or sin. They all speak of a righteous man who built a boat and animals going into it for safety, etc. You'll find that throughout many different cultures. When people went to America, the native Indians had stories about uh, a Noah character and a, a worldwide flood, judgment of God and all this type of thing. Same when they came to Australia, the indigenous Aboriginal people had stories about a flood and a righteous man and, and so forth, how God was angry. You find this in many different cultures of the world. In fact, when people from Europe went to these countries and began sharing the Bible stories when they talked about the flood, the people that they were speaking to knew what they were talking about, though the details may have been changed a little bit by those cultures. Anyways, that's another evidence for it. Um, some people ask, could all the animals fit onto the ark? Well, remember that the ark was a, a massive ship. It was big. It wasn't a small little thing that like you see in the pictures of children's books with uh animals hanging out the windows and so forth. It was a capable, uh, vast vessel capable of carrying many animals in it. Um, they would have not slightly have taken animals that were not fully grown, like juveniles or even uh, baby animals that were, you know, medium size uh, or small, even like, like uh, most of the animals that went onto the, the ark were not massive animals anyway, like dogs and so forth. Uh, there would have only been one type of dog. There wouldn't have been all the different varieties. Um, and there was plenty of room on that ark for the species of the world that we have today uh, around us. Um, how, going, if you want to go and f do a deep dive on this, you can go to Creation Ministries. Or I'll give you the whole website, www.creationministries.com or Answers in Genesis, or just do a Google search on Noah's Ark and you can find uh, more information about why the ark is a true story and also why the animals could have fitted on and whatever other questions you have there. One of the questions that are, that is usually asked about Noah's ark, well, what about the dinosaurs? Um, I know when I began to witness to my faith that I was asked about uh, this and because we're told in the – science world and in documentaries and that the dinosaurs lived millions of years before man and also that the other objections they couldn't fit into the ark well if you go and have a look at what the bible says in genesis chapter 1 24 to 25 god it says god made 
all the land animals and, of course, sea animals were made in Genesis as well. So whatever dinosaurs fit into land animals or that would have been created on that day, on the sixth day, so they existed at the same time as man. It's just uh, propaganda and theory and history in the last 150, 60 years or so that said that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago and that evolution uh, was part of the, the the scheme of how the world became. Um, but if you look at history, you'll even find that some of the ancients had pictures on their, on their pyramids or their uh, monuments and things look at, like look a lot like the dinosaurs that we uh, know about. And um, so uh, many people believe that dinosaurs were still in existence up until, you know, sometime around the time of Jesus or, uh, but, uh, or even at least in the uh, hundreds of years before Jesus was born that because they see from four or 500 years before Christ, they see these things, they found these things with, uh, pictures of what looks like dinosaurs that we would recognise today on them. Um, so they were around when man was around, and so they would have been around when the flood was around. And the objection that they couldn't fit onto the ark, if you've if you've seen the size of reptiles that we have today, the longer they live, the bigger they get. So, for instance, like crocodiles. I believe that the dinosaurs that would have been taken onto the ark would have been taken on as juveniles or young, very young, so they wouldn't have been very big at all. And then, you know, after they came off the ark, they would have grown to their full size. So the, the next question is, well, what happened to them? You know, that's the next question people often ask. Well, um, some people think it was a meteorite that hit the earth and killed them off and or, or, or whatever part. Uh, these are some of the theories of somehow what to explain what happened to the dinosaurs and why they're no longer here. Um, I don't believe that that's uh, provable. That's just a theory trying to explain it away. That's just a guess. But um, the earth was different after the flood. The climate was different. It was much harsher. Uh, dinosaurs being big uh, reptiles, it would have been much more difficult for them to survive in the change of climate. Uh, people talk about climate change today. Well, that was a real climate change. Uh, many people and scientists believe that it, after the flood, there was an ice age, which would have been less uh, good for dinosaurs to survive the bigger ones, and gradually they died out. Uh, also, mankind has a way of making animals extinct, as we know. Uh, who knows, their, their, their food may not have been as as easily accessible for them. There's many, many different reasons why. Um, but all, all we know is for sure is that they uh, don't exist today in, the, in, in the, the traditional sense of what a dinosaur is, though there are some animals a day today around that you could say were relatives to the dinosaurs like the lizards, um, especially the big bigger ones that we see in some parts of the world and crocodiles and stuff like that. Either way, um, that's uh, some ideas and some questions and answers that might give you some food for thought when you're thinking about Genesis chapter 6 and Noah, the flood, whether it happened, evidence for it. Uh, like I say, you can go and check out those websites I mentioned and uh, hopefully if you're having any doubts about what the Bible, whether the Bible's true or not, you can go and search that out and find some answers for yourself. Anyway, that's that's pretty much it for today. We will do Genesis chapter 7 tomorrow. God bless you.